If you're interested in high-end Android consoles, then you've no doubt already heard of the GPD XD Plus. This device has been out for a while now, and if you're like me, you were initially drawn to it due to its clamshell design. Some of my favorite first-party consoles come in clamshell form, and I think it's a shame that more devices aren't made with this form factor. I've already covered the GPD Micro PC on this channel, and I've been dying to finally review this device due to its recent price drop. So today, we're going to take an in-depth look at the GPD XD Plus to find out if this console is worthy of your time and money at the end of 2019. First, let's take a look at the specs of the Plus model. The GPD XD Plus is powered by an MTK quad-core chip clocked at 2.1 GHz on the big cores with a GX6250 GPU. This model also includes 4 GB of RAM, 32 GB of internal storage, a 6000 mAh battery, and a 5-inch 720p IPS screen. On the back of the device, we have our shoulder buttons and other ports. These shoulder buttons are actually not that bad. I recently covered the X18, and I find that even though these are a little clicky, they are far better than a lot of the other buttons that I've covered on this channel. From left to right, we have our TF slot, USB port, HDMI out, and headphone jack. I will be covering HDMI out later in this video, so stay tuned for that. The profile of this device isn't too thick, so you can pocket this if you wanted, but there is one downside to this that I haven't really heard a lot of people talk about. The thumbsticks on this unit can press into the IPS panel when this is closed, so I find myself having to wipe down the screen in those places after having closed the unit following a longer gaming session. Speaking of joysticks, I'm actually a fan of these little guys. They can be a lint magnet, but they do their job very well. If we look at the profile, we can see that they sit just inside that little recess, but again, they can still touch the screen. Compared to other Chinese handhelds on the market, I would say that these are certainly one of the better sets out there, which you'd expect given the high price tag of this unit. That being said, these are unfortunately not clickable, but we do have hardware keys for L3 and R3 on this device. In the middle of the unit, we have our volume keys, power button, menu key, and mapping key. The ABXY keys are pretty robust on this device. I find that these things are super responsive, even though they can be a little clicky. They are the right amount of clicky, if that makes any sense. With a quick profile shot, we can see that these things don't go flush with the unit, which would have been a clear sign of a bad user experience. The next most important thing to talk about is the D-pad, and this thing is also very nice. Unlike the X18, this thing still has some space above the plate when it's pressed down fully. This means that you shouldn't run into any problems when you're using these for directional input in a video game. The only strange thing is that one of my directional keys is a little stiff, but the other three are just fine. These are right in the middle of mushy and clicky. This is a huge personal gripe that I have with this unit. The start and select keys are located on the bottom left of the palm rest, and I always mentally want to go to the middle gap that we have here to press those buttons when I realize that they are not located in that place. Now this is partly due to the board configuration under the hood, but I think with how much these can be used in a video game, they should have been placed in another location. The only two keys besides these are the back button and home key. Near these are the speakers, and I'm on the fence with these two. They're not bad at all, but I find when I have my hands on here that they are the first things to get covered by the bottom of my thumb, and if you're a person with bigger hands than me, I think that you are going to have this issue too. You can certainly play off this a little bit by moving your hand to the side, but sometimes I just want to play dead center, and I don't want to feel like I have to sacrifice sound quality. This is beyond the fact that these speakers aren't really loud at their loudest setting, and I don't know if that's because I've been spoiled by other devices or not, but this was one of the first things that I noticed with this unit. You can be the judge later in this video with some of the gaming clips that I've recorded using the onboard sound. Before moving on any further, I do want to comment on the hinge as I've read about other people that have broken their hinges on the first generation of this device and some that have had issues with this plus model. I haven't had any issues with my hinge and I don't really think that I ever will with how I treat my devices, but I will say that this is pretty stiff out of the box and you're probably going to need to break it in a little bit before it will feel fluid to you. The best thing about this hinge, in my opinion, is the fact that you can articulate it 180 degrees, which I found very useful on more than one occasion, especially for some of the filming that you're watching in this review. Speaking of the screen, this is one of the few cons that I have with this device. For whatever reason, GPD decided not to use all of the screen real estate available to them, so you're going to be rocking one mean bezel with this unit. That being said, the 5 inch IPS screen that we do have here is nice, with all of the bells and whistles that you'd expect from a true IPS panel. 
colors are vivid and sharp, and viewing angles are top-notch, but I always come back to the fact that it seems this device should have shipped with a 5.5-inch display to pop that much more. If they manage to make a future device with this same issue, I think they are really doing themselves and their customers a huge disservice because panels exist on the market to fill out this space. Before we move on, I do want to address the fact that your device will not look like mine does for the rest of this video because I've already gone ahead and installed the clean ROM for the XD+. The fact that this is still routinely updated by an independent developer is a testament to how supportive people are in the GPD community. I actually installed this two different ways on two different devices, and now that I have more experience with the MTK platform, I prefer the simplified way of manually backing up select partitions with root and then flashing the chip with SP flash tools than doing any nonsense with recovery software. The entire process took me only a few minutes and can be boiled down into a short one to two minute guide, so don't let that fear stop you from getting this device. The firmware that I'm on recently got support for PS4 Remote Play, which is a pretty cool feature. There are actually a ton of options in the clean ROM firmware that you can mess around with, but the only thing that I've had to change so far is the headphone jack. This SoC actually uses a combination of big and little cores with different frequencies for both, but you will find the stock settings out of the box will be just fine for you. I've made only a slight change to the minimum values on my cores to get better emulation performance for the test that you will see in this video. Now, let's take a look at gaming on the GPD XD Plus using several popular titles and system. Kicking things off first with N64, and I will say that I was pretty pleased with the performance on this chip with N64 emulation. You will need to do some custom stuff to get games to run a little faster on this device than they do with stock settings, but even with these changes, games like 007 will still dip a little on this device. A lot of this is going to come from trial and error until you find what works for you. Typically, I would test out different graphic options until I got something that allowed me to run the title I was playing at max FPS or as near to it as possible. There are certainly cheaper options out there if you are only concerned with N64 emulation, so I personally wouldn't use that system alone to justify the purchase of this device. I also didn't have any trouble with Dreamcast running the Redream emulator with all stock settings with the games that I tested for this review, but this is something that I wasn't really surprised with since the slower chip in the X18 was also able to run this system without a hitch. PSP is one of the areas where I think this thing can really shine, but you are going to need to mess around with some of the settings to get things to run the way you want them to. In my opinion, if you're going to be emulating PSP, you better be doing it at resolutions that you can't get with official hardware, so I always try to test titles at a 2x resolution, but there are times on this system when you will need to use a 1x resolution if you want to get stable FPS. I tested about 15 PSP titles, all with a Bluetooth controller for the sake of filming, and found that this thing runs PSP like a beauty. In all of the tests that I did, I only really had issues with two titles, but I was able to fix these by toggling buffer options. In cases where even this didn't work, I had to fall back to a 1x resolution in order to get the game to be playable. The PSP library has some of my favorite games of all time, so being able to play them in this new form factor is a huge selling point for me. The only game that really gave me some trouble with this system was God of War Ghost of Sparta, which you can see is really laggy on screen now, but you can fix this by using a lower resolution or by turning the buffer options off if you're willing to deal with some of the graphical issues that will result from having this option turned off. In terms of emulation, I've saved the best for last because for the price that this thing goes for, PSP, Dreamcast, and N64 performance really isn't enough to motivate me to buy one. I would really need to have good performance with Android games and some GameCube titles. I spent the majority of time making this review just on GameCube because I wasn't satisfied with the content that was out there for this system. I will say that you are going to need to use a combination of specific emulator builds and custom settings to get this to run well, but you are going to be able to play a big collection of GameCube games on this device and some less demanding Wii games, which is a huge bonus. I've played through a lot of Wind Waker on my XD+, and I will say that even with all of these customizations, the game can still dip in certain areas, but it still remains playable even with those dips. You can certainly get better GameCube performance with less money if you went with an Android phone, but I like that this is at least somewhat possible on a system with an SoC this old. I couldn't finish this review without taking a look at some Android games, because after all, this is essentially a small tablet device, and the Android library is so huge that you should be able to find something that's worthy of playing. I really love playing MOBAs on this little guy, and that alone is one of the biggest reasons why I enjoy playing this as much as I do. 
These controls are basically perfect for any game like Arena of Valor or any other 5v5 game on the market, but it can also work well with some Android MMOs. I can see other people picking this up for FPS games, and I will say that unfortunately this thing does not support Fortnite due to its outdated Android version, but you can still play Call of Duty and PUBG without any issues. I used this time to test HDMI out on the XD Plus with my portable gaming monitor, and I was pleasantly surprised that the HDMI signal was really top notch without any noticeable lag that I could see both in the signal and on the unit. Before closing out this review, I do have to point out here that the middle of this device can get pretty hot depending on what you're doing. I ran my unit at a higher minimum clock than most people do, but I do want to say that there is potential for this device to heat up depending on what you're doing. So to recap, the XD Plus is a capable handheld that can easily tackle a large volume of retro systems with ease, and it supports a clean Android ROM that allows you to essentially make the device into whatever you want. It has very good controls with a pretty small screen, and at its current price, it's becoming easier for me to recommend. This thing is currently available for around $200 or less, which is still a little pricey for what you get, but I think we will see that price go down when GPD announces a newer product, so keep your eye out for a favorable price that works for you. My name is Taki, and I I've been your host on this review. If you like what you saw here and you want to show your support for the channel, consider dropping a like and subscribe to the channel for future reviews. I'll catch you here again with another review later. Now go out and enjoy the rest of your day. Taki out.